Thus began the champion's first year in Kirkwall. Word arrived from across the sea that the hero of Ferelden had defeated the Blight. But Lothering was destroyed. Kirkwall was the champion's home now. So she remained, paying off her debt. Made a name for herself in the underworld. It was a busy year in the city. That's when the Kunari landed. A great storm had caught their ship and left hundreds of warriors stranded in the city, waiting to return home. That's also when the trouble began with the mages. The Templars had become very powerful under Knight Commander Meredith. But, most importantly, that's when I first met the champion. Stays pitch, human. You know how many people want to hire onto this expedition? But we heard you're going into the deep roads. Surely you'll need all the help you can. No! You're too late. Already done. This is a sort of venture that can make a man for life. I'm not about to take any chances hiring random humans. This expedition can open doors for us in this city. We have to go with you. You're looking for a quick way out of the slums, right? You and every other Ferelden in this dump. Find another meal ticket. What are we supposed to do now? We've got nothing to stop the next person who tries to sell us out. This expedition was our last chance. Don't worry, Bethany. I won't let any big bad Templars come get you. It's not a joke. If the Templars find me, the best I can hope is to be locked away for the rest of my life. If they don't kill me outright. We need coin, status, something we can hide behind. As long as we're just refugees, we're no one. Oh, maybe Gamlin knows someone who can talk to Bartram for us. Gamlin is the reason we've been here for a year. He got us into Kirkwall. We've been safe so far. We might as well ask. Otherwise... I don't know what we'll do. I knew a guy once who could take every coin out of your pockets just by smiling at you. But you, you don't have the style to work high down, let alone the Merchant's Guild. Might want to find yourself a new line of work. <laughs> Off you go. <gasps> How do you do? Merrick Tethrus, at your service. I apologize for Bartrand. He wouldn't know an opportunity if it hit him square in the jaw. But you would. I would. What my brother doesn't realize is that we need someone like you. He would never admit it either. He's too proud. I, however, am quite practical. You're part of Bartrand's venture. That's right. The Deep Roads wouldn't normally be my thing, but I can't allow the head of our family to go down there alone. So as you might imagine, I have more than a passing interest in this expedition's success. What makes you so certain we can help? You know nothing about us. Oh, on the contrary. You've made quite the name for yourself over the last year. The Coterie has been squeezing smugglers out left and right, and the only group to survive owes it all to you two. The name Hawk is on many lips these days. Not bad for a Ferelden fresh off the boat. You must have heard of my sister as well, then. Only a little. She is certainly welcome to come, but I'll leave that up to you. Frankly, I'd rather you take the credit. Madam. Your secrets are safe with me. Find out what he's offering. We need a way into this expedition.
There must be some way to persuade your brother to hire us on. We don't need another hireling. We need a partner. The truth is, Bartran's been tearing his beard out trying to fund this on his own, but he can't do it. Invest in the expedition. Fifty sovereigns and he can't refuse. Not with me there to vouch for you. It sounds interesting. But if I had any gold, I wouldn't need this job. You need to think big. There's only a brief window after a blight when the deep roads won't be crawling with darkspawn. The treasure you find down there could set you and your family up for life. It won't be easy, but it's a chance. I think we have to take it. Better to work our way into this expedition than sit around waiting to be thrown in the gallows. We work together, you and I, and before you know it, you'll have all the capital you need. What do you say? It's not like I had anything better planned. Perfect. Kirkwell's crawling with work. You set aside some coin from every job and you'll have the money in no time. Maybe Aveline can find us some work. She's got a position with the city guard now. We should talk privately when you get the chance. In the hanged man, maybe. I'll be there when I'm not with you. Now, let's go see what trouble we can stir up. Ah, Hightown. Where the rich go to piss their money away. <laughs> this really is the best place in Kirkwall. Okay, we have just experienced a time skip in this game. Now, the in the earlier Dragon Age games, or Origins, anyway, it was a little difficult to get an idea of how much time had passed during the game. You could say, I, I always thought that it was maybe like seven or eight months or some crap like that, but I really don't have any reason to think that. Just that information isn't provided in the game. This one, it's different. You get a very good and clear indication of how much time has passed, and between now and the beginning of the game, about a year has passed. Maybe a little bit more, considering that the game actually started before they even left for Kirkwall. So, a year has passed, and our indentured servitude has come to a conclusion, and our characters here are trying to find a way to in a sense, reclaim their sort of family fortune. They're living in a kind of destitute area of low town near the um, near the elven alienage, because that's where their mother's brother lived. I had a twin brother, Carver. He used to nail my braid to the bed while I was sleeping. I never thought I'd miss him this much. Sorry about your brother. Hey. You want mine? I got a spare. We've also picked up another character, Varric Tethris. He is a dwarf, obviously, a surface dwarf, basically lived on the surface his entire life, doesn't really know life or, or care for the life of the other dwarves. More content on living on the surface. He's also an archer, he has that crazy crossbow he's got going right there. So, we were trying to get ourselves hired onto a job, an expedition into the Deep Roads. In Dragon Age Origins, the Deep Roads were where the Darkspawn had come from that were invading the land of Ferelden. Now, the fact is, Darkspawn usually are all over the Deep Roads, but it doesn't really happen during a Blight. Now, the Blight had just ended and the Darkspawn are in the process of returning. They got disorganized, a lot of them were killed, and they are returning to the Deep Roads. It may be a little bit of time before they get back there and build up their strength enough to be a true threat. So there's a short window that you can sneak into the Deep Roads, which are essentially, yeah, sort of ancient highway system, underground rather, subway system, whatever you want to call it. Tunnels, that's the best word. That linked up the old, the old dwarven cities or tigs or whatever they're called. Well, over the past few thousand years, though, past thousand years or however many years it's been, the darkspawn have ruled the deep roads. All the old dwarven artifacts, gold, weapons, whatever, are still down there because the darkspawn have no interest in that stuff. So, if you can get down there, you can basically get whatever you want. Whatever you can carry, whatever you can survive getting out with. And that's what our characters are hoping to do. 
Now there's an expedition going down there, we couldn't get hired, but Varric seems to believe that we can go and, if we get enough money together, go and basically impose ourselves onto this, because he needs financing. This is also the first point in the game where we have somewhat free reign of the cities. Now we're in high town, that's the higher level stuff. The, uh, the upper class stuff. There's also Low Town. Low Town is a sl more of a slum area. More crime. This is where all the elves have to live. It looks like crap. There's a lot of ash raining down from the sky. The place is a dump. Great ancestors, no. You know what Orzammar is? It's crap tunnels filled with nug shit and body odor. And every person there thinks he's better than you because his great-great-great-grandfather made a water clock or something. But they're your people. Don't you even wonder what it would be like? I have a good imagination. Why would I waste it on that? The character of Varric, although it's not explicitly stated multiple times in this game, Varric is a writer. A semi, uh, semi-famous writer in this world, and especially in Dragon Age Inquisition, the sequel to this one. The fact that he's a writer is brought up a few times. Alright, the elven alienage, I believe, is down in this direction. Not going to be doing a lot down there right now, but yeah, here you go. This is where all the elves have to live. Darktown is an even slummer area, slummier area than Lowtown. So nobody really wants to be there. <laughs> Except for the criminals, of course. Now this map, this one here, the uh, high town, areas like that, and the Dark Zone are going to be our hub areas, unlike Dragon Age Origins where you had a sort of overworld map where you clicked on an area to travel to there and you may have an encounter along the way or something like that. This game relies on a hub area. We're going to be wandering around on these maps a lot from place to place trying to find different things to do and we're going to be seeing this stuff a lot. That's a weird place for a... The Hanged Man. This is a bar. Varric is going to be spending his time here when he's not traveling with our group. But we're going to be running over these hub areas a whole lot. Sunshine, I'm a dwarf. In case you missed that detail. Dwarves aren't completely immune to magic, you know. No, no, no. I meant there are at least 30 people in this town who'd murder my family over trade deals. Who has time to worry about apostates with a merchant's guild breathing down your neck? In that case, I see. I believe this is where Varric lives. I think he sleeps here. Which is weird, but whatever. Sleeps in a bar. I guess it's also like an inn or something because there are other bedrooms. So, yeah, that counts as a bedroom. I'm gonna steal your shit. Yeah, that worthless crap is what I need. By confining the story to this one area and all of that, it kind of changes the way the story plays out in this game. And by having your main character voiced and all that kind of stuff changes it around a little bit. Oh yeah, you do that to change party members. It's the Black Emporium also. This is like a DLC thing. You can find items and stuff and it's like a shop Doing this is a little bit like cheating, because I'm taking all sorts of much higher level items than I really should have at this point in the game. But, uh, let's... Let's, uh, check out what we got here. 
You can also change what your character looks like with this Mirror of Trident's Mogrification. Hey, look. Other crap. It's creepy. How many hands does this guy have? Creepy. It's the Hanged Man. It's the Black Emporium. We cannot go to the Fives Accounts Keep yet. Or the Chantry. Um, Gamlin's House. We're going to go there next. There are also these external areas that we can go to. The Mountain. That's City. City at night. You can wander around all these areas at night. Because only certain things happen. Some certain things only happen at night. But we're going to be running over the same area a whole bunch of times. So let's go over to... to be noble, right? I some definition of the term. Do you ever wonder what your life would have been like if you were still nobles? Sunshine, nobility is just an expensive lifestyle. I've already got one of those. Nobles have power too. And responsibilities. Estates, servants, investments, mercenaries, assassins. <laughs> We've still got all those things. It's sunnier here, and nobody calls me my lord. I think I can live with that. He's a little more of a down-to-earth individual than most dwarves. The Gamlin's house is over here. We're going to be living here for a while. At least until we can get on our feet. Hard to believe they left me nothing. Well, Mother was pretty steeped when you ran off with your Pharrell and Apostle. Oh, okay. Not doing those things yet. Rules of magic. We're going to be getting into that later. Hey, stuff. Can't even take all this crap. We don't have enough room in our inventory. Uh, you'll get mail here. Here's dog. He wasn't like this in Lothering. I think he misses the open fields. Come on. Let's play fetch the invisible ball. Poor thing. Maybe he'd be happier if we brought him with us more often. But if he's with us, who'd keep Gamlin's debt collectors away? Take it. I'm sick of what's his name staring and panting. Gamlin, honestly, a Mabari understands what you say. Try using his name. What's wrong with Dog? Real easy to remember. Alright, um, we'll be going back here a few times. These are DLC things we're going to be doing later on in the game. I uh, might as well end the episode here before going and doing any more storyline content in the game. Trying to do any missions. Uh, while, you're in, while you're in your home, you can't level up your other characters. But at the very least, I can do it with Hawk here. Willpower, did I want that? Yeah. 
Uh, what do I have? An ability point. Uh, I can't really get what I want right now, so... Uh, I might hold on to this ability point until I figure out what I want to do. But I can go, at the very least, and upgrade her weapons and armor and all that kind of crap because, well, I picked up some awesome new stuff. What is this? Uh, that's not as good as what I already had. Not as good as what I already had. But I can give her armor. Not as good. This stuff requires a higher level. There we go. That's definitely better. Bam. I also have some other crap going on here. Trophy belt. Ooh, that's nice. And we drop more coin. That's nice. Uh, da, 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 da. You can uh, stop watching now if you want. I don't really plan on doing anything else. Rings. I have a pair of rings. Bonus to lock picking. We drop better equipment. You need a knockback. There we go. I don't think I have any helmets for her. Not at this level. Requiring higher level of strength and everything anyway, so whatever. Can't use that. Now when you leave... Oh, maybe I can get these two things now. Oh, I leveled up. Great. <laughs> I still only have one ability point. When you are out, I can only bring these two with me right now because Aveline is locked behind a uh, story wall. When you're out and about, you can go and change the equipment on your other characters as well, but it's a little bit more limited. You'll see what I mean once I bring it up. Like, let's say we have Bethany here. She, unlike Hawk, I cannot change the helmet, the gloves, chest piece, and the shoes. I can only change her entire equipment set. Companion armor, it's called. So, it's not like we're going to have situations where we're worrying about, say, what about, um, what are we going to do when we have a piece of equipment that we, say, we like, but, you know, it's not necessarily useful for us. Uh, in the other games, you could save it for one of your other characters, sure. But that doesn't really work in this game. So, you can get rid of stuff that you don't plan on using for your main character. And that is a more reasonable thing to do. Also, when you change the armor that they're carrying, which you can only get, like... I think there are only like five sets of armor available for each secondary character. Hey you only, uh, it changes the appearance of the character. Down here is a little bit further in the low town. Map's a little bigger than you'd think, although the maps in this game aren't very large and they're kind of repetitive. And you'll see what I mean when we get to the later part parts of the game. Yes, let me take this weed. <laughs> Alright, uh, that'll be the end of the episode, so thanks for watching, and goodbye.